Hey, this will be one of a series of videos as I document my progress doing a complete overhaul of my puzzle game Sync. Sync is about moving these little robot guys, which I like to call finders, to the same place, but they all move, well, in sync. If any fall off, you lose the level. I started this basic idea around five years ago now, and I've made a whole bunch of iterations of it. This is the possibly final iteration that I plan to publish on Steam. The previous two iterations can be found on my itch.io page. Anyway, I'll get more into a full look at the mechanics and history in another video. For this video, I just want to talk about the level editor. Alright, so I am making the level editor for Sync. I've kinda done this before, back when this was a poorly programmed raw JavaScript web game, but now there's a lot more stuff and it's made in Unity, so I'm starting over and making it better. So here's what I need to do. First, I have to convert levels to a format I can easily save to a disk instead of having a prefab. So I personally love JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. It's super easy to work with, and it's very human readable and even human writable, so I can focus on reading and writing as separate things. So the first thing I had to do was make a sample JSON file with all the information, essentially, that's inside level. So here I have the par, finders, um, each finder has to have a position, a color, and a movement multiplier so that we can know whether it goes like forward or in reverse because some of them do that. Then you have the floor, so the floor has position and size that so you can have like an 8x8 floor and also a color. There are colored floors, that's another mechanic in the game. So there's also walls, right? They have a position and a size, a color, and a new feature that I haven't really put any content out about yet is a pushable wall. So I have to have a boolean as whether the wall is pushable. Then there are objects, which are just generic objects on the floor that can have various different things that happen when finders go on top of them. So there's a color switch, switches the color, slider um, slides the finder in the direction it came from, and each of those has a position and a type. Um, and they also, well, there's also a shifter, which is a specific type of floor object that has some other data it needs, um, which is four directions, because it can push any of the four colors of finders in four different directions. So the next step was to write a function that turns this JSON that contains all the information I need into an actual playable level in game. And that worked much more quickly than expected. So the next step was to move to the inverse, something that writes an existing level object to JSON. This isn't strictly necessary for the editor, but A, it'll be nice to have all the levels I built into Unity in a concise level editor compatible format, and B, it'll help me test that all these puzzle elements actually work because I can just use levels I've already made. And somehow that worked with very few issues as well, so on to the next step. The next step was to make something that the player can actually use, so I needed a way to place puzzle elements in game so that they can be converted to JSON. Once they're converted to the JSON format, I can load them into a real level. So I decided to use tile maps for this so I didn't have to make my own grid system, and the final idea looked something like this. So you can select these puzzle elements by image and just paint them onto the tile map. Then when I actually implemented it, I changed up the format a bit, partially due to programming laziness and partially to make it look better, and now it, I think it looks nice. You can move your mouse over these items and they all do that little rotation so you know when you've selected stuff, and you can paint all of these items onto the map. Now there were two major caveats to this. One was for shifters and the other was for pushable walls. So. The way shifters work in game, right, is they can push any color of finder in any direction. That meant 625 possible sprites, and I did that, just wrote a Python script to generate those sprites, and then the GUI was a pain, but it got done. And then there were pushable walls. The issue with pushable walls is that they could be any size. So regular walls can also be any size, but there's no mechanical difference between a 2x2 two two wall and four 1x1 one one walls next to each other in the right way. There is a mechanical difference when it comes to pushable walls, because essentially you can't push two pushable walls if they're in a row, but you can push one even if it's huge. So I had to make a way to do that. So the way I did that was just going outside of the tile map and having a game object that represented the wall, and if you clicked and dragged on it, it would change the size. 
So the next thing to do goes back to this graphic. I need to be able to play the level, save the level, load the level, and publish the level, all of which go back to this JSON format. Then after fixing some bugs, I had a working way to convert the tiles to JSON. Then I hooked up this button to save the tiles to JSON and immediately load the scene for playing the level. After that, I immediately realized I had forgotten to implement the conversion from JSON back to the level editor, so I had to start that up. So now that the levels could be saved and loaded, I wanted to allow them to be posted online. So I haven't done web requests with Unity before, but I looked into it and saw what I could do. And it looked like I needed to use a database for this. It would be pretty inefficient to just store all the JSON files like I originally planned, but I hadn't worked with databases before. So I spent a day trying to figure out um, how I could get access to one and how I could, uh, well, just learn the basics. And the answer was very easily. I just spent the day learning SQL and relearning some PHP. Had um, I couldn't use Python with the database, though I wanted to. And I wrote a PHP file to add a level to the database, uh, one to request up to 20 random levels from the database, and one to request up to 20 random levels that contain a specific string within their titles so that levels could be searched for. So once I did all that, I needed to set things up in-game to make those requests. So for publishing, I force the player to complete the level before it even tries to publish it. That way we hopefully won't get any impossible levels. Then for loading the levels, I had to make a scene with 20 empty levels to be overwritten by the levels requested from the server. Then I added a button to save those levels client side to get a new set of levels and to search for levels. And that was it. My level editor worked. This was technically the third part of this update I worked on. I didn't make a log for the pushable walls, but I'll include it in a future video. Then I tried to do some 3D modeling, but I'm very inexperienced with it, so I got frustrated and moved to the level editor instead. Anyway, if you found this interesting and you want to know more about my game, subscribe to this channel for more videos on it coming soon. Also, follow my itch.io page and my Twitter if you want more updates on my games in general. Well, see you soon!